Good evening, everyone. We'll just wait for three more minutes for the participants to join. We're actually expecting more participants, but I think uh, respecting the time, I'm going to start now. Shiva, ma'am, can I start? If you're there. Yes, please, uh, Lakshmi. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, it is already 8.3. Yes, and uh, Dinesh sir is traveling today, despite that he has joined us. Yeah, so uh, yes. we'll be starting now, ma'am. Sure, sure. The five, yeah. The five most efficient cyber defenders are anticipation, education, detection, reaction, and resilience. Do remember, cybersecurity is much more than an IT topic. This line by Stephanie Napo is indeed an apt opener for today's session, as majority of us who joined here today are first responders to cybercrime victims. On behalf of ISEC, I welcome everyone present here. ISEC is India's leading non-profit organization, advancing national cybersecurity and professional ethics at workplace. COP Connect is an initiative of ISEC in order to fight cybercrimes by acquiring assistance from experts in information security. It is the one-stop solution for cybercrime victims to connect with the police, lawyers, first responders, psychologists, and even technical experts. The application is already available in Play Store and iOS. If you haven't enrolled in CopConnect yet, then please do it. So before I introduce you all to our guest speaker, let me cover the do's and don'ts while intervention. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Please let me know when the screen is visible.
I suppose the screen is visible. Can one of you please let me know and uh, I request you all to stay on mute. Uh, the rest of you, unless we are requesting you to unmute, please stay on mute. Thank you so much for confirming. You can put it in the uh, presentation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I've actually put it. It's just just taking little seconds to come. I think there's some issue with that, but never mind. I'll just take a few more seconds. Ma'am, is it in presentation mode now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so before I start, I want to tell you that uh, so far we have encountered, you know, some uh, types of beneficiaries and I want you all to identify which category you belong to. So the first category is like, wow, I'm a cyber crime in investigation officer, intervention investigation, who cares? It's more like, you know, potato, potato. So uh, do you belong to that category? Then please, uh, you know, just type one. The next one is uh, I got what I wanted, the certificate and the ID card. Then why should I volunteer? Third category is I want to volunteer, but I'm clueless. The fourth one, I'm willing to learn and do some effective intervention, which is, the, uh, you know, the category which we prefer. And uh, yeah, the fifth one, learning. I know everything already, anything cyber under the sun ask me, but I haven't done handful interventions yet. So the last category is like, who is a first responder? What is this session all about? I really hope that we don't have this category here today. So a couple of steps uh, for effective intervention. I won't be able to see your chat messages uh, but if there is something urgent, then uh, please let Shiva ma'am know or otherwise you can unmute. So the first thing that you need to remember is we are there to give them intervention, not investigation. It's more like giving, if you're asked to do, uh, you know, first aid, then please stick to it. You should not perform surgery. So it is as, uh, you know, similar to this. And intervention is always our primary duty. It's the prime duty. So please stick to it. Nothing beyond that. You are there to help the victim file a complaint in the police station. Okay. So uh, next one is bond 007. So your ID card, I know uh, the ID card that we get, it is like very precious and you get it after so much of hard work, but please don't flash it. I mean, uh, you know, go around uh, publishing it. Yeah, you can update it in the social media. We do encourage that, but please at uh, least hide your uh, number and uh, you know, unnecessary places going to the police station and uh, introducing yourself as, um, you know, Cop Connect member and then promising the police to do uh, things or like, you know, if, without our knowledge, doing it is also not recommended. And uh, Cop Connect the dots. So another thing is like, um, you know, our role is to make the victim get the right help. And uh, the rest of it is actually the cyber police's job. So we should not assume ourselves to be uh, you know, the police officer here, and we are not there to do the investigation because at times that can be dangerous for the victim and for yourself. So the next thing is no hearsay. All right. So it's like at times you might be getting called from the friend of the victim or friend's friend of the victim. So these kind of hearsay, please don't go for it. Don't start acting suddenly if you haven't heard from the victim or next of kin. You should always ensure that you get the first hand information from the victim or somebody very close to them if the victim is not in a condition to talk. And uh, next one is like record it. Like I am very sure I know that many of you have already done a bunch of interventions, uh, but you know, for future reference, always record it. It's always good if you maintain a Google sheet with the record of cases you have intervened. And uh, please be very careful because if you're storing sensitive data, let it not get leaked because uh, you know the victim might be trusting you and sharing a lot of things, which when shared might be very, very uh, you know dangerous for the victim. So please don't do that. And then call them for uh, sorry, calm them first. You know, when the victim is uh, uh, going through this trauma, it's like they tend to forget a lot of things. They might not be in their complete senses. So before you do the intervention, please uh, calm them 
and ensure that the victim, you know, they'll be already going through a lot of grief, fear, chaos, and, you know, a lot of confusion. So they have to be calmed down first, and then you can ask them necessary details. And uh, chronicles of chronology. Chronology is like one word which you always need to remember when you're an intervention, I mean, first responder. Uh, because it, it's not just a verbal uh, thing that you uh, have to rely on. Always go for a written document. And these are the data that you need to check. I mean, at least, you know, encourage the victim to have these data when a cyber crime happened to them. So first one, in case of a financial fraud, they should have the transaction ID or UTR number or UPI ID or whatever detail they have. They have to collate it and keep it in a particular order, like order of the incidents. And then, uh, yeah, the mobile phone number, WhatsApp number of the culprit and the chat history or whatever. You never know from where you might get a clue. All right. So, uh, always, uh, sorry. I think, okay. So I request uh, Mr. Devesh to please uh, mute. It will be interrupting the session unless you have something very interesting to share or you know something very crucial to ask. Otherwise, kindly mute. So. Uh, you can, you know, you can even motivate the. Uh, so you can even motivate the victim to see if there is any email ID, you know, and always uh, check for the email communication with the headers, like from which ID it was sent. So all these details, please get it from them and some uh, links or files that is like shared by the culprit. You are not supposed to, uh, you as first responders, please don't click on anything and please encourage the victim not to click on anything that was sent by the culprit because you all here, majority of you are technical experts. You'll be knowing more than any of us. So you know that clicking it might lead to further dangers. It might be malicious. So don't blindly click on, you know, j just for like when the uh, victim is sending it to you, don't blindly click on the links or files they send you. So the next one is, uh, if it is a social media related uh, cyber crime, then the URL of uh, the Facebook, like whichever social media platform it is, or e-commerce website, or even Telegram. So wh whatever details you are having, just make the victim get the screenshot of it, make a chronology in proper order, like what, when, where, how, everything has to be uh, you know, presented. And uh, in case of financial fraud, I think one more better point will be uh, was covered by Dinesh sir last time, and I hope he'll be covering it today. Uh, so uh, one point is like in case of financial fraud, we should not waste time of the victim. All right, the first thing they need to immediately do is file a complaint uh, from their local SIM by calling 1930. But in certain state, I think 1930 might not work. In such cases, they can, uh, you know, file a complaint in cybercrime.goa.in. The accountability is more if you do it here. But believe me, yes, it might throw error at times, but you have to be patient and you need to motivate the victim that uh, you keep the chronology first intact, paste everything in the notepad and then copy paste it there because it might, you know, keep on repeating. So uh, you have to be very, uh, I mean, you have to actually get it filed here. And if both the cases are not working, then the nearest cyber cell, they have to rush immediately. Uh, even though RBI says that it is three days or like 72 hours, but the sooner they uh, act and the sooner the police is able to freeze the account of the culprit, if there is money in the account, then there is like chance to reverse it. But before that, if the transaction, further transaction happened, then if the victim knows somebody from the bank, then they can try getting the detail. But otherwise, legally, it is not possible. But yes, um, I when I checked with Mumbai police, they told me that if the culprit's uh, bank account has made further transaction and if the victim manages to get those transactions then they can even freeze those bank accounts so um, in case of credit card uh, fraud then the victim can even uh, you know fill up the dispute resolution form and a request for the reversal so another case uh, so uh, can uh, one of you please uh, unmute and tell me if you have done any um, financial fraud uh, cases or you know just helped any victim in financial fraud uh, so if you can just tell me the steps that you would be following if there is a financial fraud victim what would you do you can even chat i mean send your uh, am i audible Yes, Lakshmi, you're 
Yes, ma'am. So I'll do one thing. I can do this session, I mean, uh, interactive session later on. And maybe because Dinesh sir is also waiting, so I'll finish, uh, let sir finish talking, then we'll have the discussion forum open. And after that, I've kept some screenshot, which I couldn't press in last time, which is the actual conversation between victim and the culprit. So during that time, maybe we can have it more interactive. So yes, so in case of sextortion, uh, now this modus operandi, it is pretty interesting because the fraud has been following it for years and it is pretty much the same every time. So what will happen is like uh, in case of sextortion, first let me tell you what is the effective interaction, I mean intervention steps. So you need to tell the victim that they should not pay any money to the culprit. And uh, if they have already paid the money, then you need to follow the uh, financial fraud steps that was just discussed before the slide. And you need to tell them that after, you know, first thing will be a beautiful girl, the, he, she'll be like interacting with this person and then they'll have a video call and uh, the pre-recorded video will be played and his face will be recorded and that particular recording will be used to uh, blackmail this person. So uh, while this blackmailing, when people give money and then at a point when that stops, the next thing is a fake um, uh, you know, a cyber cop will be calling them and this fake cyber cop, I'll tell you the exact dialogues what he told one of the victim. Ki, Beta, dekho, yahan pe ye ladki ke ro hai. Aur tu jaldi paisa de, varna tera video YouTube mein jayega. Now you imagine which cyber cop will speak this language. And that itself is a, uh, you know, flag. But then at that time, the victim will be in so much of pressure, they won't be understanding it. So they might believe, especially when they see a, a cop's image in a true caller, and even the name is saved. So they will tend to believe we cannot actually blame them. But you need to tell them that a fake cyber call might be calling you. Just warn them in advance and tell them not to believe in that. And the next step by the fraud will be a fake YouTuber's name will be used. So they'll be again, uh, you know, just send money to this YouTuber and he'll unsend the video. Now, this is the language they use. I'll, I'll show you the screenshot and they'll be blackmailing the victim. So one more thing you need to tell the victim is in all the cases that we have noted, the culprit, uh, you know, note, this sends the fear that is there in the victim. The more, uh, the uh, you know, the victim is scared, that is where the culprits will be misusing. So they sense it. So as long as the culp I mean, victim is scared, they'll keep on demanding for money. The day when the victim sounds confident, that is when they're going to stop torturing the victim. It'll last for maximum one week, not beyond that. But before that, they need to file a complaint. Even if in police station, somebody is asking not to file a complaint, uh, I have checked with, again, uh, police officers. They highly recommend that the victim should file a complaint in order to stop such kind of torture to them. And uh, yeah. Please uh, tell that, you know, also one thing I've noted that the, all the victims, they feel so shameful because this is not normal crime, right? And uh, they will be hesitant to tell this to their family. So as a first responder, you need to tell them that such type of crime is very normal. Daily, a lot of people fall victim to it and many of them might not even intend to have a video call with the culprit. One of the victim was in the office when he attended the call. He didn't even intend to talk to the person. But just a couple of seconds and this happened. So please tell them that nothing is wrong. Their life is not going to end there. It will be back to normal. Please, all the victims who spoke to me, they were very worried. They were suicidal at that point of time. But after some days, they are now, you know, leading very, very normal life. So this is possible. Tell them, give them this hope that life will be normal again soon. And if, yeah, just like I said before, if they have lost the money, please ask them to follow the financial fraud step and tell them never to give money to a fraud because it is more like filling a bucket full of holes because their greed is never going to satiate. And the more you give money, the more they'll keep on asking. So this uh, type of fraud, please keep in mind, this is loan app fraud. Again, you need to sense the, um, you know, uh, the victim, even though they might appear to be very confident in the beginning, after a couple, after a couple of hours, they might break down completely. I've, I've noticed that, trust me. And uh, this kind of uh, loan app fraud, people are more suicidal. Like majority of the victims who came to us, they sounded suicidal. That is because, uh, as you know, like you might be knowing, right, what is loan app fraud, people tend to download these Chinese, um, I mean, uh, I mean, these apps, which is not there, and which is not there, I mean, which is not even RBI approved. And what happens is like, just to get 2000 rupees, they download this, while downloading, they'll give access to their uh, media, I mean, gallery and uh, their contacts, and they'll even give their PAN card and Aadhaar card. 
and after that uh, when they fail to pay the money back the blackmailing start trust me i've got the conversation between a culprit and a victim you can just read for yourself and see what kind of conversation happens and uh, when the money is not paid on time many people start calling and torturing and then messages blackmailing and the spam card and aadhar card will be used and then the photo might be morphed and a very bad message will be spun and it will be sent to all the contacts of this victim and when messages start reaching the victim's contact that is where the victim is going to break no matter how strong and confident the person is when this kind of you know shaming happens when this kind of cyber bullying or harassment happens the person breaks down so please be with them what they can do is like we isec we have made couple of uh, you know awareness post and videos and uh, you know creatives so you can give this to the victim and ask them to uh, send it across to their contact and tell them that if the culprit is sending you something defaming this person this victim the victim is not responsible if they become a victim okay so just warn them that their family the victim's family should also understand that this is not the victim's fault and uh, the rest of it yes you, they can just spread awareness that and one more thing they need to secure their uh, mobile phone and in the previous case also for sextortion i missed one point uh, the victim might have kept their facebook in a way that anybody can access it please advise them to lock it because at times i've noted that the friend list or the mutual friend every detail the culprit is getting it from the social media which is not securely uh, maintained so please uh, advise them to immediately secure their social media platform and if they are victim to any case then please one more thing their uh, bank account has to be secured and wherever grievance officer has to be included like if it is a banking fraud or facebook or youtube wherever you can include grievance officer or nodal officer please try to divert the victim i mean please ask the victim to contact them as well and uh, yes so uh, one just couple of more points so in case uh, <clears throat> yeah the same point that i have mentioned already so after you do the intervention after the uh, victim is back to normal stage what we would recommend is like please get a testimony from them for the work for the good work that you have done and what will happen is like when you get to read such kind of uh, testimony and when the other ccios get to read this they will be motivated to help more victims and what do we need if we have more first responder to help the cyber victim then you know we are inching towards cyber hygiene and cyber safe nation so please this type of motivation is required and you have to motivate the victim to give you a testimony after they are in the normal state and one more thing you need to keep in your mind is that every case is a unique learning experience and um, or it's not like we know everything even if you know i we i am doing it for like past uh, two and a half years this intervention i still i am in learning mode and all of us we have to accept that there are like new type of frauds happening it's not it's this topic is never outdated even if we do the same session next week or next day still new type of frauds will be emerging so we have to be open to upskilling ourselves in the respective field and learn from our mistake and from their mistakes also and uh, with the permission of the victim without revealing any detail you can take the screenshot like what i have done and couple of you have also uh, i think shared it in the group right cop connect one so we can collate such thing and release some kind of awareness articles or awareness post so that is also useful and uh, some don'ts that i want to discuss is like never believe blindly believe what information is presented to you you should not assume that all the victims who contact you are genuine ones if there can be uh, you know like uh, some frauds who might disguise as uh, victims to just grab your attention or just to know that what exactly you're doing so never visit any victim in person even if the victim is asking you to visit their home please don't go there you have to visit them only in copkin cafe or in a police station or public places but not at their home and uh, again the same thing that i said before never click on any suspicious links or file and uh, yeah if if you know it is beyond your expertise please understand here the discussion that is happening it is for first responders who are mainly doing intervention if there is a requirement for investigation then they have the victim has the option to choose technical experts via cop connect application and if the respective police station require any help from the technical experts then we are always there to help them so please be transparent when you go for certain steps like this and i think the nesh sir will be letting you know why this kind of action might be dangerous in future 
so uh second last point is like never promise anything which you're not very sure about uh like uh, just guaranteeing something that they'll get their money back in two days three days please don't do it we don't know how long it is going to take we don't know whether they'll be getting their money back it all depends on the balance that is there in the culprits account so never promise anything which you don't know and uh, never publish the victim's detail anywhere and confidentiality has to be made in i'm so sorry just a couple of points more left i'll make it quick and uh, be, don't perform any task beyond intervention and always you know understand police is supposed to do it not us we are only an extended support to the police and never force a victim in couple of cases i've seen that we are like you know trying to force the victim to file a complaint please understand it is the individual's wish we are no one to force them yes we can tell them what will happen if they don't file a complaint but we don't have any right to force a victim to file a complaint <clears throat> excuse me yeah and then do not encourage the victims to contact you for requests apart from intervention intervention is your duty if they are coming up with anything beyond intervention please learn to say no believe me it is kind of difficult in the beginning but it is very much possible this is how we all learn because if you keep saying yes and focus on that particular victim the other victims who need your help might be missing you out so please uh, yeah can we have the ppt <laughs> Okay, well, I'll actually get permission from Naidu sir and see whether I can share the PPT with you. I just suddenly saw a chat. I'm sorry if I've missed out the rest of the chat messages. So uh, next one is like, do not miss your identity as first responder by flashing it in public. Yes, trust me, culprits are misusing it and they're demanding money also in on behalf of the owner's ID. And then uh, never judge a victim. There was one case wherein the lady had an extramarital affair and she was hesitant to tell this to her husband. But we are there to just do the intervention i cannot probe and ask why did you do this that i'm no one to judge her never be prejudiced when there is a victim we are only here to do the intervention nothing beyond that please understand that and i just want to confirm whether uh, uh dinesh sir are you there sir is traveling today and despite that he had agreed to come and address all of us so uh, sir if you're there you can unmute and let me know good evening ma'am and and Good evening, sir. So, uh, but, sir, uh, my next is understandable, but I will try to. Uh, say yes. Something. So, would, do you want me to introduce yourself first and then uh, let you talk? Because I don't know how much time you have to talk to us. Can I introduce you, sir? Please. Yes. Uh, so, dear all, I want to introduce you all to Dr. Dinesh Yadav, sir, fellow COP Connect first responder, and he has over 25 years of experience and has dealt thousands of cases. He's a certified ethical hacker and a certified cybercrime investigator, and he has authored book title, Computer and Information Technology. Sir is also a certified cybercrime intervention officer with ISEC. He established Center for Cybercrime Investigation, CCCI, NOIDA, and has trained more than 1,000 police officers in cybercrime investigation. Sir holds a PhD in management of cybercrimes, and he's a social media intelligence analyst. And he holds Master of Science, Cybersecurity and Cyber Law from IMT Ghaziabad and Certified Cybercrime Investigator from Asian School of Cyber Law. And sir is currently the ASP of Armed Police Training College, Sitapur, and has also served in anti-terror squad uh, Uttar Pradesh and Transgomti, Lucknow. Dinesh, sir, kindly address the gathering. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shiva, ma'am, also. Ma'am, my network is very unstable. I will try to... Uh, say no something problem, in brief. So, the first thing I want to share. Yeah. The part on this. What is the role of the CIO? Why they are so important? So, the gap between the police system and the public is very much. Because the origin of Indian police is from the British side. And earlier, it and initially it was formed for the uh, that uh, legacy with the police is there and is there. So the CCR cases, what in, for mission is to be given to you, Bill? As a bridge between the victim and the police officer. So, victim don't know 
how how can the people on the shelf have cyber crime portal? How can they have to do somebody in cyber space? So, yeah, if for most of the first time, you can do the national cyber crime registration portal. And or one, but two. So they, there are, are they, they, they are basically located at the same place. Complain the register. The third option is if the Sir, I think there is some issue with the voice, sir, right now. Um, sir, is there any option to join over calls, sir? Or uh, can you just try talking now, sir? Maybe it's clear now. Uh, Shiva ma'am, is it just me or uh... no? We all cannot hear. I can't hear okay. So, uh, Dinesh sir, uh, what you can do is like I can uh, carry on with like couple of other slides, and can you just send a recording? People are asking for. You can even voice record. I can just play it here. Or sir, maybe you know, uh, I'll do one thing. I'll call you now, sir, on WhatsApp, and you can talk. Maybe that will be audible. Just a second, sir. Kindly bear for just one minute. I'm just trying to reach uh, Dinesh sir over normal call and I'll just try to put that on speaker mode so that he'll be audible. I'm just trying that from my end and meanwhile, if you want, you can just put some questions that you have and uh, I don't understand what. Please record and send it on group if network issue. All right. So please understand sir is actually traveling today and despite that he's come to address us all. So let's be thankful for that and. Uh, And once sir's network res uh, restores, uh, he'll be back. And sir, uh, just feel free to unmute once you're back, sir. So meanwhile, what I'll do is like, I'll just uh, carry on with the rest of the slides. And once we have sir back online, we can continue with that. And meanwhile, I just want to know just before I move on with the uh, slides, does anyone want to ask or just anyone want to share something? Like the intervention that they did and just explain to us how you did it so that we can just understand whether those steps were correct. So, uh, Ms. Sai Sudha, I have, do you want to unmute? You can even raise your hand. That option will be better. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Sai Sudha. So, can you please uh, tell your story? Can yeah. you make it quick? Yeah, yeah, quickly. Good evening, ma'am and all. Uh, I'm very lucky actually, in fact, to be with this uh, ISAC team. Uh, whatever I've learned from them was really wonderful, actually. The last two months, I had worked with Cybercrime Police, uh, Vishakapatnam. So, I got an opportunity to, you know, attend to the, like, as first-hand responder. So, I came across so many cases, actually. So, different, like, you know, the whatever is a way of doing is different. But uh, ultimatum is only one is for money and the other is for name, fame, and disturbing the reputation of a person. These are the main things actually behind their their motive is only. And what I found was like uh, some were the known people, some were the unknowns, and some were the known unknowns. I have come across all the three types of uh, people who uh, you know uh, have done the crime with the victims. And the victims were I came across some people who almost even tried to commit uh, suicide. 
because they lost a lot of money and found the different sectors like you know the different age groups like youngsters most of the youngsters were victims to uh, this part time jobs and also gaming and another thing was mostly college students and uh, like that students like the children were victims to this uh, love affairs and you know uh, defaming and uh, taking revenges uh, copying up their photograph sending this obscene and new things that was one of the things with the youngsters and women i have come across some women uh, who had uh, befriended friends in uh, this instagram and facebook and all and they were looted and one girl she one lady she had even given her all her jewelry diamond studded jewelry she had given to her that guy had sent somebody to her doorstep and she packed everything and she gave she came running to the police saying you know my husband comes to know what will happen so what i as my little bit of knowledge what i had i said why don't you do a bit of homework like wherever you have met him and if any cc cameras are there try to collect the footage after giving the complaint go and meet the people who are having any cc cameras so that you can get some footage to check who that guy is and those phone numbers and wherever you have met him so that happened with some women like that like that some other women also became friends somebody said i don't have a brother so she made him a brother i've seen she has uh, saved his name in her phone as a brother i said if, if he would have been your really your brother would he cheat you this way or what so people what i felt was i was trying to tell people uh, i've done some of the awareness programs also in the local places so and wherever i have met people i did it with whomever i traveled i just whatever i could share i shared but then what i felt was any time anybody whenever they getting something like just now I, before me lakshmi ma'am was talking uh, don't click on any links if anything come just give a pause by when we are going to cross one road also we are thinking we are stopping looking this side that side and then taking a move so why not we do even in these steps also in whatever comes to us and we do we need to really give a big pause and question to people around or anybody whom you know whom you trust if it's a related to bank why don't you go to the bank and you know check with the this one and there was one boy who had uh, taken uh, he had given money to somebody whom he became friends on in a train and later that guy said he's going to give him a job and nearly 2.5 lakhs that boy had given he comes from a very poor family so he was almost like you know he thought of committing so uh, he didn't even have food he walked so many kilometers and to give a uh, complaint so i i could help him with some little money i said have your food and then you bring out the prints submit to the police station and write a complaint and then you try to get his photograph his anyway he was caught that guy was caught and i saw the elderly persons they were victims to this electricity bill then uh, even some uh, songs ma'am, and how many cases have you intervened so far ma'am uh as i said seriously i did not count i was thinking that ah. i should have done because no i problem. used to sit from morning 11:30 to evening 6:30 ma'am and in the afternoon lunch hour also i used to attend luckily i got that opportunity uh to you know in uh, talk to them even some people from out of places they used to call over phone and one was a bit of a language problem for them so no, i think they actually come through cock connect app or how are you motivating them they are like you know some beneficiary of the webinar your friends friend or you branded yourself as a first responder like how are these people contacting you just in case you know the rest of the first responder wants to know so one more thing ma'am like in the effective intervention steps like if you would record these things it will be like and get the um, testimony from these victims it will be like really boosting the confidence of the rest of the first responders and yeah, yeah. you have done a commendable job already and we all you know appreciate you for that and it's actually an inspiration for the rest of us as well and please uh, share all your intervention story uh, uh, you know as a mail or something would you be able to do that ma'am yeah i will prepare it and i will share yes yes please yes, do ma'am. that we'll be waiting for it and thank you Because so much I'm, for sharing i was feeling so i mean like you seriously i'm telling as and as every day i was not feel like coming home and there were so many people one or the other it is just like uh, uh, what i was feeling like you know what's happening on the earth why people are rushing to police station 
and everybody comes some comes crying some people out of i just saw one person a young person his father had given him some money for his sister's wedding and he had actually lost it in some uh, online job he lost oh. that money and he he thought of committing suicide i don't know how he controlled he came the next day and then we actually helped him then i told you have to tell your parents about it exactly so if you don't so tell I- your parents then there's a lot of pressure again from where you will earn that money from whom you will ask that money at least that thing will be cut out from this pressure of return getting the money back so of course the one more thing was even i also have observed that whatever payments i mean these people were looting the money it wasn't going to one particular account you know they were just randomly they're giving somebody 500 somewhere 1000 7500 some 8 hundred i know i understood when i was going through those what i felt was this uh, online loans they were giving right so randomly somebody's message suddenly one message comes and said you are you have been uh, your loan has been sanctioned and you got so i was thinking where this money was going actually so that is the reason for police it would be very difficult actually to catch the di- guy directly exactly. It's and really that is exactly why first responders like us are there, ma'am. And thank you so much for sharing uh, all these experiences. And we all are like really inspired by you, ma'am. And let me just check if Dinesh sir is back or not because I oh, saw him this morning. And yeah. sir is actually traveling. Uh, I think I it is. But yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are pretty. I mean, very clear, sir. So, Please. So what thank you so much. You can thank you. open the session for the question answer if somebody has some confusion. I think that will be better. Sir, I think that Miss Sue, what you spoke in the video, sir. Mike, can you hear me? Uh, it's very clear, and please uh, don't request sir to open his camera. It's with great difficulty. We are getting the audio clear now, so please, uh, Mr. Sonu, uh, let him, you know, just continue with the audio because we need to rely on proper audio at least. Thank you, sir. Please continue, sir. What I was talking. So there were five options. First is the cyber crime portal. The second is one nine three zero, and the third option is one one two. One one two is also very helpful for registering the uh, cyber crime. If all these four options are not working, then we should go for the nearest police station or cyber to get it registered. The the role of uh, CPIO is very important for the victim because victim don't know how to register there. Okay? What the information are required? So CPIO as an expert can. can uh, uh, suggest him or uh, draft the application or the required information so that the proper case can be registered or he can guide him also or uh, and encourage him for the registration of the crime because till now what what is my experience is only 10% of the cyber crime is being registered till today so 90% of the cyber crime is not being reported so when is not reported then uh, it will not come to the surface and the the this the volume of the uh, the business of the cyber crime only be dealt when it is registered so my request to all the cpios is to encourage the victim to register the fir and if you are technical expert you have the knowledge of os in and or some technical situation about the hacking and so you should not do yourself you should assist the police for doing this so that can help the police in the investigation of cyber crime if you do it it is not proper so my suggestion is to so the technical expert who are cio they should uh, suggest the police the base or uh, assist them to investigate the cyber crime so that will be more helpful one more thing which we should do in case of cyber cyber fraud the time is a very 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 important so as soon as the case is registered so the if it is, am i audible am i my voice is clear or not it's Hello? clear sir it is clear sir we can hear you so so the in the case of cyber fraud the case should be registered immediately or it is informed to the bank concerned your where is your account is so now i think there is a glitch uh 
uh, sir, I think you're not audible now. Yes, sir, now, now you're audible, sir. Hello. Now, now so, you're audible, sir. Now you're audible. So, so my request is, if there is any question, because the voice is breaking again and again, so I can answer some questions if somebody has. That will be more useful, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if anybody is having questions, please uh, raise your hand and so that we can, you know, let you unmute and you can ask your question to sir. Uh, please uh, stick your question to, uh, I mean, it has to be a relevant one, which is connected with intervention and which is beneficial for the rest of the participants. So, uh, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, my connection is so poor, so I couldn't. But uh, we are able to hear you now, sir, clearly. In between, we lost you, sir, but now you're clear, sir. And before we lose you again, I think we can just ask them to quickly ask question. I think Yashwan has raised his hand, and I'm going to unmute him, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yashwan, are you there? Uh, uh, thank you, Yashwan, ma'am, and Shiva, ma'am, and me, sir. Uh, the thing is, sir, that I wanted one question is that uh, more often than not, what happens, sir, is that. Uh, all of us who have committed ourselves to COP Connect and have got the CICCRs and uh, uh, certifications and the ethics uh, certifications, we want to help. Uh, but however, what happens is that uh, more often than not, after the preliminary investigations have taken place, then we get involved. And by that time, the uh, victim has undergone multiple repetitions of uh, questioning or uh, you know, some kind of a thing so that, you know, then it, there's a defensive mechanism which comes into place. So the victim is not able to respond actually. We we want to help out everybody, that is the victim as well as the law enforcement agencies. Anything that you have to say on this, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, was I audible? You were audible. I'm just waiting to confirm with sir. Yeah, before you can't hear it. So uh, it depends upon. Case to case. Uh, Dinesh, sir, I think we have lost you again. Uh, it's okay. What I would uh, recommend, sir, is like uh, let these uh, participants share their question with us. So you do the well, the panel is Hello, hello, hello. Please, please share the question. Uh, yes, sir, now you are. Sir. To us. I, I'll reply on mail. There's no issue. Yes, sir, sir. I'll do that, sir. I think that will be better, sir. And you are you are actually taking in so much of effort for us, sir, despite you traveling. You are, like, investing time for us, and it's so much of risk between, like, so many parties, I mean, passengers, you're talking to us, so that itself means a lot for us. And you've already motivated us. So, and I think the answer that you were giving, uh, so the person who asked the question, so I hope you understood it, or if not, sir, will be, like, sending a voice note, or otherwise, I mean, answering it, I'll pass on the answers. To you in the COP Connect group. Hope that will work for all. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you. Sir, uh, I think, uh, sir, we'll move on with the PPT, sir. And the questions, I'll take it offline with you, sir. And if you have time, kindly uh, share the answers for that. And uh, I'll pass it on to the COP Connect team. Anyways, you're also there in the COP Connect team, sir. So I think you can answer it there itself. I'll do that. I'll do that, ma'am. I'll do that. Because Thank you so much. And sorry, sir, we are bothering you on a day, a busy day like this. We totally respect your work and how unpredictably you had to travel and still you didn't cancel on us, sir. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, dear team, so since, you know, we had a plan, but then a uh, sir had to travel. It was an urgent thing. And as you know, we have to respect his profession first. And uh, it, it's highly unpredictable. And despite that, he at least came here and addressed us all. So with that motivation in mind, uh, let me, uh, you know, move on to that PPT. That PPT, in a sense, it's not a, you know, just content that I'm going to teach you. It's just real conversation between the culprit and the uh, victim. So just let me know, yes or no, if you want to see that or not. Because a couple of you, you were saying that. Um, yes, please, yes, yes, ma'am. 
yeah thank you thank you and just somebody asked if they can take session definitely we are doing that any college any organization even residence awareness wherever you want just let us know you can just drop a mail to us and uh, we'll be you know if you want speaker if it's a webinar then yes Sheba ma'am you can contact her and uh, if you want offline speaker and if you are good at it then you need to submit the PPT in advance and just you know just do a sample presentation to us and then convince uh, you know the team and then you can do okay so this is exactly what we want that point i'll be discussing in the end what we as uh, first responders in copkinic can do in order to achieve our mission and let me just move on uh, with the slide the rest of it i hope you people like it because it's kind of interesting to see the conversations that happened and let me know once uh, the screen is visible last time i couldn't present it uh, so some i think mr thomas had asked the PPT for do's and don'ts. Um, okay, I, can I actually take it in the end because just respecting the time of the people who are, you know, I don't know, the majority might be wanting to go on with the next slide, but uh, it, it it's just a quick thing if you want to just see. I won't take all the time here, but uh, prime duties intervention, and then you should uh, get the uh, report from the victim themselves or their next of kin, and then always record it get the chronology and get all these details from them the every small detail get it from the victim and uh, financial fraud don't wait for three days to complete uh, just try to file the complaint make them file the complaint immediately with all the details intact 1930 like sir told 112 or even cybercrime.gov.in if nothing works the nearest cyber cell and uh, some dispute form will be there that also and then the grievance officer you need to contact extortion tell them not to pay money tell them about uh, the advanced things like youtuber fake youtuber fake cyber cop calling and then um, yeah loan app fraud they're not supposed to pay any money back and then please calm them down and uh, that's it i mean getting the testimony upskilling yourself these were just the couple of points that we uh, discussed and one of the main point is to never visit the victim in person uh, at their home and they never blindly believe anybody who come and tell you that they are victim and they never click on any suspicious link so if i even repeat it further then people will be bored and they might leave the meeting so let me please move on with the next part so this is like the real case oh thank yeah i'm glad that you found it useful mr thomas and yes so the Tha sagar ratna thali case so what happened is like the, this conversation please while i'm explaining you can read it so this happened uh, with a professor in lucknow assistant professor professor i don't know but uh, she was a covid patient and she couldn't go outside and get food and she ordered it was like what one thali me teen thali free or something like that too good to be true you know one thing i keep telling people is like if something is like uh you know too good to be true is like you need to keep oh uh, devish i'm so sorry i'll get back to you later on that so uh, this lady what she thought is like in agar ek, it is good, right? And she went for it. And as you can see, the culprit has here uh, sent her a APK file. And as you all know, what will happen if APK file is being clicked? Her, her mobile was compromised. And next thing she did was like, she gave all her detail by clicking this website. And US intervention, I mean, first responders, please see that this is not even Sagaratna's, you know, official website. Somebody has just created a website in Wix site. Okay. And um, next thing, just as you can see the language also and just some random APK file they have clicked and they she lost I think 3 lakh rupees or 1.5 lakh I'm not very sure I don't remember to be precise it's more than one week one year one and a half years I think so next thing is like add me cart okay add me cart me what happened is like uh, here in the left side as you can see one person got an AC air conditioner from add me cart and then uh, he never received it that was the fraud that happened to him he tried contacting the customer care and uh, while contacting the customer care again one person asked him to download any desk app as you all know any desk or team viewer all these things are required only when there is a need to work from home that too genuine your uh, employer has asked you to but sharing the nine digit number with somebody who is not known to you and somebody who is promising you a refund somebody whom whose number you googled from website that will be dangerous you need to understand that and then see this transaction that has happened 29,000 uh, see he has even shared this is actual conversation between the victim and me not the culprit here 
So this is the, the left side male is between the culprit and the victim. So all these details, uh, see, as, as first responder, what I've done is like that payment option that was uh, used and then the uh, software which was like there, all these things has to be mentioned in the complaint. The victim had missed out certain points. So all these things like the website from where he purchased the item, the uh, actual, you know, uh, creator of that, everything I had actually given them. Just you never know from where the uh, police will be getting a clue for this, right? So this is like one of the, con uh, and then the next one. So next one is Bitcoin fraud via Instagram. So the left side one is of a different person, as you can see, go give it a try and thank me later. So the person is replied as they're sure. This happened before the account got compromised, okay? And after that, see uh, what she has written. Her account got compromised and uh, after this, just a second, I'll have to just switch this here. And as you can see, there was like one account called as uh, like Ali Mehdi's. But then the person who contacted the victim was like uh, Shivam. And uh, such kind of fraud happened like two, uh, within two hours they'll get, you know, they can double the money. Most of the college students fell victim to it, okay. So uh, these kind of fraud, like it's not pure Bitcoin fraud. So they were, I mean, there's scope to get the money back. But when it is like, you know, proper Bitcoin fraud, it is very easy to track and people are not getting their money back. Now that's a totally different story. So this is like loan app fraud. This was the one which I had told you all about, if you remember. Oh, I'm so sorry, I moved on. Okay, so this one, see, Magic Cash, Cash Planner, Hippo, I mean Cash, all these like non-RBI approved ones, they're taking money, the victim took money, and then suddenly, you know, when, they st when he stopped answering the call, within seven days he was supposed to pay back, and then when he stopped answering the call, this was the message he received, and from look at the number from where he's getting the message. So, uh, see, Hippo Cash Recovery Team. And uh, look at the language. Hippo Cash Recovery se bol raha hoon main. And next, see, this like, if he is being, this victim is being blackmailed and told that if you don't give me my money back, then I'll be, you know, um, I'll be actually morphing your photo. Somewhere this, this line was written. All right. And nahi to, dekho, like he's actually blackmailing the victim that, I'll morph your photo and, uh, you know, just release a nude photo of yours and send it to your contact. This is actual conversation between a victim and a culprit. And this is how the victim is, was being pressurized. And the victim here is a cyber, I mean, he is not, uh, you know, a person who doesn't know anything about cyber safety. He knew, but then still he fell victim to it and he regrets it. It was just out of curiosity. He wanted to try and see what exactly it was. But then this thing happened. Initially, he was very confident. He thought that he uninstalled the app and nothing further will happen. But no, while downloading the app itself, they had the contact detail and gallery because of which and the pan card was also given and all these things was used. This one, see, this particular thing. This is the message that the person received. The one in the left side, it was received by uh, one of the ladies, assist, I mean, relative. Okay, so he received it. Just imagine this kind of message to all the contacts, victims' contact. No wonder they feel suicidal. At that time, you as first responders should calm them down and tell them that this is something normal happening. And we have created awareness videos and posters, so please pass it on to them. And see. This person is a drug addict and then please contact the government officials if you get to see him. This is what was mentioned. Ah, huh, this one. This one was a conversation between the culprit and the victim where the victim went for a party, a birthday party. So here what happened is like the victim started receiving mails saying that I know you went for a birthday party. Some stalking was happening, okay. And a birthday party and I know you're pregnant. I know you slept with this guy. So these kind of uh, mails continuously she was receiving. And when we uh, did the first intervention, I mean, uh, when we did the intervention, we told her that this has come from a proton. You just see the head, I mean, the email domain. It has come from like a proton mail, right? So it is like very difficult to even track it. And one has to be a technical expert. I mean, a techie, if they have thought so much, instead of sending it from a Gmail or normal mail, they've sent it from a proton mail, this guy has to be a techie. When we told, the lady started doubting her husband. Okay, it seems that she didn't even update her status and all these details. She is suspecting her husband. So all these, you never know, like one point which you, uh, I'm so sorry, am I not audible? You're audible, Lakshmi. Yes, okay. you're audible. Okay, okay. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. So this conversation, see, congrats, new mommy. Look at the um, 
you know, title. I am not, I, I'm not a Photoshop expert. Only thing I've done here is hiding the victim's detail because I'm not supposed to show it to you. But otherwise, these are actual conversation. I took the screenshot. I got permission from the victim and here I'm presenting it in front of you all. And I expect the same from you all because together we can create, you know, awareness in our society. And next thing. So impersonation and cyberbullying. This case is very close to me. I think I've repeated it at least 100 times, but I never get tired repeating it. Because uh, here, the girl, uh, she was 19 year old when this crime happened to her. Her details were uh, published in a dating website and she got very scared. She's from a conservative family. She cannot tell her father because she doubted that he might kill her because he was that strict. And when she removed a number, I mean, she stopped using a number. Her mother started getting calls. You have to be very carefully listening to me. This is exactly where the first responders can be of great use to the victim. So when I was doing the intervention, when even, uh, you know, from our organization, uh, the side, the psychologist and all the experts, we were like talking to this girl because she was suicidal at that time. And we were uh, requesting her to go and file a complaint. So typical response from the victim is like, lo kya sochenge? Police station mein jane se lo kya sochenge? So this attitude you need to, you know, change in the victim because police are there to help us. They are friends. They are like there to help us whenever we are in need. They are not our enemies there and people are not there to judge. If you fear the people and not go to the police station and file a complaint, then later on bigger things will happen and put you in bigger trouble is what you need to tell the victim. Okay, so here the girl, uh, like while doing the intervention, I was doubtful because she told that when she stopped using the number, her mother started getting calls, right? So that means it must be somebody who uh, know the girl. And in one more case I've noted is like, you know, in, in a couple of cases I've noted a common link. The person who notified the victim about such profile existence. There was another girl whose Twitter, who didn't have a Twitter account, but her normal birthday sari wala photo was uploaded in Twitter. And there, that girl, it like it was uploaded in a page where only 18 plus contents were being put. So this girl, while reading the comment, she was highly, uh, you know, um, like totally demotivated and she was really scared. And the person who uh, first notified it to her, you know what he told? He, see, your profile is there, but don't worry, nobody might have noted it. So as a first responder, I would actually see him as a suspect here. And here also the girl, the person who notified her that sister you know your account your profile is there in, uh, in in dating website that person is also a link i'll tell you how so daily she started getting 40 50 calls okay and this girl was terrified and uh, later on what happened is like uh, when we rec finally uh, requested the coimbatore police to cooperate and she was finally able to meet the go to the police station with her mother she filed the complaint she already filed it in cybercrime.goe.in and uh, since it was anonymous and in coimbatore there was a rule that anonymous complaint they had to go to the police station they went they approved the complaint and within one day the culprit was caught now who was the culprit some boy she rejected six months back he did it and the person who informed her about this dating website was mutual friend of that guy. So these things you need to note as intervention, I mean, first responders. So just imagine this was like from dating website, she shared it with me, like this was shared by that person, it seems. Now this extortion, now this is the Monica, uh, the lady I was talking about. I don't know if such a lady ex exists because her facial features seems to be a bit distorted to me, but still. From this number, I'm not even hiding the culprit's number. So uh, from this, uh, you know, this face, this person, she uh, first contacted our victim in um, Instagram and they ex he didn't give the number, it seems, but his uh, Facebook account had the number. She got the number from Facebook. She did a video call. He was in office. It was 12 o'clock in the noon. He just uh, attended the meeting. Uh, so, so he was at, he was going to attend a meeting and he attended the call and it was recorded and she started blackmailing him. So net banking nahi hai mera, fir delete kar doge kya. See, the boy actually paid 21,000 rupees. And this guy in suit, these are not real people, okay? They're definitely not real culprits, but this photo was used. That's what I'm trying to tell. So they were like, video call enjoy karoge kya, bolo, bolo. And then uh, the person, this is another chatting. This left side is a different chatting, but this guy actually, he didn't fall victim to her. But the next side, see, uh, this guy actually paid money. And from the other side, the right most, you can see, hello, I'm Rahul. And then unsent kardia video, proof low, then 21,150 uh, payment karo. He actually paid the money. Now, what to do? I mean, if we knew him before, we would have stopped him from doing it. But then he already paid the money and raised a financial fraud complaint. 
So uh, sex extortion case, uh, I'm not posting the image of the police officer here because he also received a fake cyber cop uh, message and uh, I won't reveal the police officer's name, but I even notified the police officer. As first responder, I even contacted that he's from UP police and I told him and he was like, hey, I don't know why people are misusing my name. I'm just a bit active on social media and they're doing this. But people, I think you'll find it in my LinkedIn if you go. I have even written an article and I've even published a video of that. So, yes. And in that LinkedIn uh, article that I've written, if you read the comment, then you'll note that uh, the in one of the victim, like to be victim, he didn't become a victim. He wrote that, he read the article and he knew that it was a fraud and he didn't pay money. So this is where if you put these stories, if you spread awareness, people's life might be saved. Okay. So these are like, um, I know that's like too much of me talking. I don't know if any of you had tried raising your hand. If you want to talk, but please ensure that you have to limit it within one minute. Uh, because only then we can move on. So do you want to uh, share something interesting? Please let me know. Or if you can wait, then I'll, um, you know, just carry on. Then later on we can talk. Can one of you please uh, let me know? Ma'am, Shiva, ma'am, what should I do? Should I carry on and then later on just open no, the discussion? Yeah, that no, is better, right? Okay, yeah. so yeah. I know I was just doubtful if like everybody's paying attention or not because it's just me talking for a long time. So I don't know. Uh, fine. So this is like fake profile, fake website and fake pages. So people see uh, this is this is, you know, the Lahiri Resort. If you note here, it's clearly uh, written that Lahiri Resort is closed since 2019 and renovation is under process and it is written. But what will happen is like when people Google, they'll actually uh, uh, see the result that comes on the top. Make my trip, it is active. Go Ibibo, it is active. And Google result, it is active. So people end up paying money here. And uh, what happened was like uh, the person, he booked ticket for all his office, his colleagues, and he lost 33,000 uh, for this. All right. And uh, uh, Lahiri Resort, he even filed a complaint. He went to the police station, but uh, that particular police station, he was told that the police, the person, Instead of filing the complaint, uh, the victim said, Bola ki, like, you know, my sister became a victim. Nothing is going to happen. You return home. So there might be like a couple of, you know, uh, like uh, in, in cyber cell, you might encounter such kind of people who might en not encourage. Uh, um, yes, uh, yes, Sai Sudha, ma'am. Uh, I'll just give you the opportunity to speak. Uh, just a second. I'll just complete this and I'll give you, ma'am. So, uh, okay. So this, what happened is like the police, even if they are restricting to file a complaint, at that time you must, you know, inform the victim that it is their right to file a complaint. Nobody can deny them. Uh, in sextortion case, there was once, you know, uh, the victim was asked not to file a complaint. They told that, Aapka naam newspaper mein aayega, beisti ho jayegi, please. And then when I spoke to Mumbai police, our uh, commissioner there, I mean, Bal Singh Rajput sir, he told us that, no, it is not true. Police is supposed to take the complaint and nothing. If the victim wanted to be a private one, then that anonymity will be maintained. So uh, you please motivate the victims. If they are being denied by the police not to file a complaint, they still can because we have got, you know, support from the police officers like Dinesh Yadav sir, uh, like last time we had Rahul Alwal sir, or like Bal Singh Rajput sir, Triveni sir, and a lot of other police officers are there. We know them. And one more thing, as first responder, please establish some good connection between the police so that whenever we need their help or whenever there is like, you know, like I said, somebody is like denying uh, the victim to file a complaint. We can quickly call them up and seek their help. So these things will happen. And then, yeah, see, army officer account. This happened with one person in OLX. I think he was trying to sell something or trying to rent his house. And the person told that I'm an army, uh, you know, soldier. You can trust me. And he even showed his ID card, which I'm not including here because that was a genuine ID card and family pick and everything he showed. And when people hear army, they patriotism and they blindly trust. They don't, don't even know that no army person will keep his name as army office account. Okay. And see, this one was even funny because here Mudra Yojana. Imagine this guy was a uh, Ola bike, uh, Ola automatic, I mean, this electric scooter fraud, he forgot to update his profile picture and he pretended to be from Mutra. He was confused which one, which category he belongs to.
So this is like uh, Pankaj, uh, Mr. Pankaj Singh Badoria might be an innocent person, but what to do? Fraud some is using his name, his profile, his detail. This identity theft is happening. This impersonation is happening in his name. So this Ola scooter expert, uh, his uh, manager's name, they pretend that Pankaj Singh Badoria is the manager. Now, one thing you need to note is like this Ola scooter doesn't have an address. They don't, they are not willing to see you in person. Okay, they say that it is in factory. Factory kaha pe nahi batayenge aapko. So these frauds don't have a proper address. They won't have a proper number. And these kind of, uh, you know, PAN card, even our PAN card might be misused. We never know. There was a time when we all used to share it blindly, right? But now you need to be very careful when you share your Aadhaar card. Uh, yesterday while taking a session, I was told by one of the audience members that when he went to stay in ITC, hotel ITC, and he was giving Aadhaar card as his uh, ID proof, ITC hotel, they denied it. They said that there is like QR code, which is linked to your bank and we don't want to take any risk. Please don't submit your Aadhaar card. So people are being cautious now. So you as first responder, please spread awareness and please be very careful with your ID proofs. So this one is very interesting. This one, the lady lost 98,000 rupee, let me tell you in advance. So what happened is like uh, she received a call and she was told that there was a parcel and uh, in that parcel drugs like they found uh, the narcotics team or somebody, they found drugs and she is not allowed to travel for next couple of months. And see, it's a CBI, but uh, the signature is done by a commissioner. Okay, and it's Satyameva Jayat. It's not even Jayate. And it is not a proper document. And uh, the language, the, the, the sentence structure, the paragraph, everything looks so perfect, but it's actually from fraud because I knew this sir who's, uh, he has requested me to hide his identity. I knew him. So I went direct, I mean, I called him and I asked him, sir, sir, aise, aise hai. Like, yaar, fraud hai. what to do? People are misusing my name. Please tell that lady. But then she had already lost the money. So we quickly asked her to collate it and then prepare the chronology and file a complaint. So what happened is like, you know, why she believes she's very educated. And uh, she was asked, did you share your Aadhaar card somewhere? She like, yeah, I recently went to a hotel. I shared my Aadhaar card. Yes, your Aadhaar card was used to book this courier and now it is caught and you're totally responsible for it. Pay this 98,000 rupees to the customs and then, you know, you can get your money back later on when you're proved innocent. And she paid it. She never got her money back. But then, yes, yeah, she filed a complaint and we need to see what's the status. This is like London-based miracle. This girl lost 6.5 lakh, okay? And LinkedIn, one uh, lady from Britain, she contacted her and uh, she pretended to have a miracle cure for like animal, uh, I mean, which can be used as animal vaccine injections. And you can see how well this, this doesn't seem to be an Indian to me. I don't know, I might be wrong, but I just sense that this is like, you know, something, it is a bigger kind of racket. And this girl, she wanted to work from home. She wanted to earn some extra money. She's just 22 years old and she lost all the money for this. So one more thing that I wanted to tell you is like, there was one lady who lost her uh, um, 35 lakhs. She's in Bangalore and uh, what happened is like, I think uh, she, she's a single lady, she's a Catholic. So there was a good social engineering done on her and the culprit, he, he pretended to be a wrong number. And then later on, he started telling her that he's also a Catholic, he's a single parent. And then later on, they started talking despite, you know, ignoring him for a long time. But then he was persistent and she started trusting him. And uh, later on, he told that he has released some 35 crore gift for her. And in order to receive it, she needed to just pay some money in uh, customs. And uh, when she started paying, it just went on and on. And then it became 35 lakh. She thought for 35 crore, maybe, you know, 35 lakh, it's fine. And her feeling was very genuine. She trusted him, but she was cheated. Even recently, she told us that the person was texting her and asking for more money. But at one point, she realized because she didn't have any more money to be paid. She even took loan and paid the money. So uh, you as first responder, you can remember these six C's when you are uh, working with uh, the victim. So remember, you need to, uh, no, this is actually, you can tell the victim, this is not for you. You can ask the victim to calm themselves. You can ask the victim to use, uh, you know, Cop Connect app in future also, or otherwise if they've come from there, if you intervention, you, they want some investigation, they can definitely use uh, Cop Connect app, then ask the chronology from them, then cybercrime.gov.in, then call 1930 or the grievance officer or the nodal officer, or if all these things don't work, then please visit nearest cyber cell soon. So uh, COP Connect app, since majority of you will be already enrolled, I request you all to enroll yourself in this. And uh, 
one quick thing that I want to tell you is like if you know you are interested to set up Copkinet Cafe in your locality, trust me. Yesterday when I finished the um, you know the webin, I mean uh, the offline session, I was told that every street should have a Copkinet Cafe. Now why Copkinet Cafe? The 19-year-old girl who was hesitant to go to police station, just one week back I received a, a you know case wherein the 63-year-old lady she was hesitant to go to police station, and that is like into n number of cases. People are not willing to go to police station, like in major cases also. So this Copkinic Cafe will be doing it in touch with the police station nearby, the cyber cell, and the police, like they can come to the cafe and the victim will also go there and you can have the discussion there. So how to do it, what are the requirements, all these things, if they sound interesting to you, if you want to set up one, please drop a mail to us and we'll be guiding you further. And as you know, Copkinic is a platform for people like us, and it will also have cyber lawyers, uh, you know, cyber psychologists and technical experts and law enforcement agencies. So this is the need of the hour. This can prevent a lot of cyber crime and this can help the cyber crime victim because this is a one stop solution and objective and all you all know, because you're already um, a part of it. And please, this point, I need to. Um, uh, you know, just uh, stress on it, public awareness, blogs, stories and cases. This is like very much needed. You can collate it and you can even uh, contribute it to the Copkinic platform. You can upload it there and uh, yeah. So uh, please ask your family, see how many of us are attending this meeting today. So what if you ask the people, I mean, the, your loved ones to download it and I'll send a forward message in the group today, please forward it to everyone and please ensure that they download it and whenever they are in trouble they can just identify the nearest first responder and please be active and uh, at least mention your availability in the application whenever you're free and all and uh, one more thing yes you can do uh, webinars you can spread awareness ISEC has been supporting many of the members whenever they come up with a uh, webinar request we are always supporting so please uh, feel free to even if it's like a number of audience does matter please you know just bringing more people uh, as beneficiaries and we are always there to support you and uh, yeah that's it so maybe if you want to discuss something we can do that so ma'am uh can you provide us with some standard PPT so that in case you want to conduct offline webin offline seminars, we can use uh -huh. them and see okay. uh, uh, so, that PPT to uh, everyone? Actually, yes, yes. So I think if you drop a mail to Shiba, ma'am, uh, ma'am, uh, can you answer this question? Because we do have like standard thing, but it is for our speakers. So if you are doing it, ma'am, do you expect him to make a PPT on his own and then give it to you, ma'am? Yes, yes, correct. You're right. Uh, yes, uh, per way. So, feel yes, then, uh, yeah, we would need a lot of material and you know data to make a PPT. So, so why don't you do one thing? Why don't you? Uh, how many webinars have you attended? Which is like given by ISEC, not this one. This is exclusively for CopConnect members. Have you attended the webinars by ISEC for colleges, schools, uh, or you know organizations? Uh, no, not yet. Not huh. not so for the schools and like, colleges. Uh, uh -huh. So what you can do is like we'll be posting all the updates if you've been following our pages. We frequently conduct such online free webinars. Kindly try to join it and then once you, you know, attend it, a couple of them, you'll understand what exactly we intend to cover for the audience. And you feel free to make one similar to it and then get permission from Shiva ma'am. And we also want to know uh, how well you will be able to present it to the people. We have uh, speakers already, but if you are confident to do it yourself, then please, uh, you know, just since you'll be representing ISEC and it's a brand and we want to ensure that the person who's doing it is like, uh, like, you know, is adhering to the uh, what expectation from the organization, we will be just checking that. It is valid for even me. Every presentation that I do, uh, repeating, I mean, any time, I am bound to present and, you know, send that presentation to Shiva ma'am and Naidu sir and get their approval. I mean, I, I actually send it to even Naidu sir and, uh, you know, he'll be actually giving me certain points. Nobody's perfect here. So there are like, you know, a lot of uh, ref uh, reforming, I mean, refining all these process that will happen to your PPT, but we totally encourage you Please try to attend a couple of webinars first and so that you'll get an idea what exactly the audience might be asking. Without any idea when you go there, it might be a bit difficult. So would you do that, Mr. Parvez? I mean, just attend a couple sure, of webinars before you take one. I, thank you. Thank you. Sure, yeah. uh, Lakshmi, ma'am, first, first of all, many thanks for 
such an in, insightful session. It, it was a very useful one for us. Thank um, you. I just wanted to ask on that one point wherein there was a point raised that we should not plant our CCIO card because there is a there is a chance that that might be misused by the potential attackers or potential but when but when when we talk about awareness uh, things right so there mm -hmm. we have to showcase yes. our badge right just to yes uh, yes yes just, um, just maybe you know i'll just so make it more clear uh, sir here but uh, you, you can uh, you know just even i've shared my id card but what i do is like i'll hide the id card number Okay, that is just private to you, right? You and the police. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, I never had to even print my ID card because I never had to prove my ID to anybody. Okay, I never had to show it to the victim because mostly it is telephonic, and I never had to show it in the police station either, because most of the time when I go to the police station, it is not related to a particular intervention. It will be in general representing the organization that I go. In that case, I'll be already informing my organization and going. But otherwise, ID card. You can uh, upload it in your status. You can upload it in LinkedIn. This be very much needed because only then people will get to know that you are an inter I mean, Correct. first responder. Correct. But you can hide right. the sensitive detail, and that is the basic that, yeah. thing that we can do. Yeah, then right. you can. Yeah. You yeah. should yeah. do. Yeah. In fact, you should motivate others also to share it. But flaunting, what I meant is like one more thing that people tend to do is like they will, uh, if police require some technical help. Here you have the ID card for first responder, which is mainly for interacting with the victim. But people will go and you know just tell the police that I am an investigation officer. I am see this is my ID card, and you are actually an intervention. I mean uh, intervention officer, and you are like you. There was one person who even uploaded his LinkedIn as cybercrime investigation officer (CCIO). People don't know the difference yet. So in those cases, please don't flaunt your card and show that you know I am an investigation officer. Look at my ID card. And I am here to do this. I'll solve the cases. My organization has approved me. I am from. I am working for National Security Database. One guy even saved his number as National Security Database, and his passport was like I think passport that cover was made that you know with the eagle that Falcon logo and all was there. Nobody is actually uh, acknowledging him as an employee of NSD, or I don't know who gave him the right to do that. In such cases, he's just using updating his WhatsApp status. It's actually a criminal offence. So in such cases, we wanted to make people aware that no ID card is for a specific purpose. If the victim doubts, if you are a first responder, please show him this. Okay, and you can use it in social media and all, but then hide your at least number so that people won't misuse it. Because even police officers' ID cards are being misused. So uh, if your ID card is, uh, you know, that ID number is like hidden, then there is like lesser chance for them to edit it and then use it, right? So this is why we were just telling that. But thank you for asking this question. I had missed out that person, you know, the one who had updated his job profile as working for National Security Database. I missed out that point. Thank you. No problem. Ma'am, are we to receive the hard copy of the Cop Connect ID? Um, I'm I'm not the right person to answer that question. I think uh, Mr. Yatinder will be answering it. I, like I said, uh, two or three years since uh, being a CCIO, I never had to. All the ID cards are given. I mean, it's under the process of printing. They will receive. Because okay. we have a complete backlog of right from 2020. So slowly we are doing okay. it. So you will get a All right. Sure, thank you. Yes. And um, it's, it's, I think, if any other question, because I'm not able to scroll it properly. Hello. So how to connect Hello. to copy tap? Somebody had Hello. asked. Hello. Uh, Mandal. Yeah, Dr. Somya. Yeah, ma'am, I have uh, one uh, like um, I, I see that like I work for an engineering college. So it's, okay, it, it happens that we see in mandatory disclosure of every engineering college, including our college or multiple colleges across India. We have something called mandatory disclosure that we need to give it for NBA or NAC or AICTs, so many government agencies. And most of the time, when you go for mandatory disclosure, all of our personal details will be available over there, like faculty name, their address, their phone number, everything. Okay, ma'am. And and we find that sometimes we, when we start getting anonymous messages or like... Uh, say uh, particularly for paper publications and other things we start getting these uh, whatsapp messages 
we we have, we would have never it, it so happens they start from the first name in the list of uh, faculty disclosures and till the last name in that list they keep on calling everyone okay uh, and sometimes multiple people respond and i have seen like where uh, 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 faculties have uh, uh, like uh, uh, they have landed up paying money for publications and nothing happens and suddenly that number goes void and they can and uh, and many junior faculties or whomsoever they 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 cannot even disclose it to somebody else because it's not something ethically right got it ma'am got it so what like uh, can, can means uh, can we recommend like how much amount of information can be made public in a website institutional websites yes ma'am i think you have the freedom because if there are like a lot of you know cyber crime cases already then you can recommend you can request it through your uh, hierarchy i mean the college hierarchy and uh, together many of you can uh, file it because even in when we started cop connect at that mm -hmm. time there was like you know we uh, initially everybody's number was there or like mail id was there then we slowly started getting concerns that no i don't want to you know publish this so as an organization we respected that but we also recommended that since you're here for this uh, you know helping out the victims give yeah. a phone number which yeah. is not uh, your regular user which is not connected to your bank account so this is like one suggestion and the next one would be uh, ma'am like the address don't give it like i don't know if the entire address from your id proof is being displayed there or the address which you gave is being displayed there so one thing is like okay uh, you you should have the right to mask the detail which you don't intend to i think the website all the uh, column that should be selected in a way that the fraud should not misuse it but i always advise that my phone number be careful and another thing that we can do is like since already a couple of teachers i mean professors have fallen victim to this and one mm -hmm. cyber safety awareness in your college or if your mm -hmm. university takes it up we are there to provide it ma'am and we'll ensure yeah. that we, we we're not ensuring but we'll be like guiding them like we'll tell them what is right what is wrong how mm -hmm. to identify if it's like a fraud mm -hmm. Uh, there are like a couple of steps, ma'am. Like we have prepared it, and we tell them that be careful when you get a call. Be careful, never Google a number. And if somebody is asking you to click on Google Pay link, never do it. So we are guiding them that way. So please, if you can, you know, keep this as a reason and start a webinar in your college, arrange for a cop can a cafe in your college. That will be very beneficial. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Lakshmi, we have uh, Mr. Srishankar with us. He would like to speak. Oh, sir. Okay, Sri Shankar, sir. Sir, over. <laughs> yes. Hey, hi, Lakshmi. Hi, hi, sir. Grand, 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 grand session and a great, great learning opportunity. Thank you so much for watching. Sir, so we all have learned from you, sir. Um, <laughs> I think that your voice is not clear. Or okay, is it clear? So, your voice is not clear, sir. I think today the main people they, they are having the main ones people want to hear from they are having technical glitch sir can you speak again sir uh, kind of sir I think we can't hear you okay uh, uh, hello ah sir I can hear you now sir Uh, Shri Shankar, sir, are you there? We are not able to hear you. Ma'am, meantime, can we like uh, take one question? Somebody had raised. Uh, hey, uh, can you hear you, me or sir? not? Yes, sir. Yes, now sir. we can hear you, sir. Now clear, sir. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I just want to add one thing. There is nothing much for me to add because you have you're done a great session. Congratulations on that, and you have been an inspiration, Lakshmi. Personally, I have seen how much of a difference you have made to how many victims and connecting to the IPSs across the country and contributing to a great deal. My one point is, I think I would like to just give this message to everybody um, that many people think it's it's a, it's a privilege that they get, and it's rightfully so. It's a privilege to support people, but it is not a privilege for your own personal glory. If you learn anything out of this, that's a side product. Many people come to learn 
please remember that this is a privilege. It's not a place to just learn. Learning automatically happens, but I would really want people to stand by one another because of the kind of position that India is today, we can only take it up if we are helping the country grow in a safe way. And that should be our context. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, people, please know that Sri Shankar, sir, is like guru and he used to handle the CCIO sessions. And people have learned, like people like me, we are like learning from him. And he is like somebody who has got hands-on experience, like he's held crucial roles like CISO and other roles also. So uh, like we are lucky that he came to the session and he even addressed us. So please take care of that point, sir, is very much right. Thank you, sir. And uh, ma'am, can we uh, like uh, like let Abhishek Naidu and I think Sai Sudha ma'am and all like ask question. Abhishek Naidu, you can unmute. I think he had raised his hand and then he lowered it. Would you like to talk? Yeah, because uh, Sri Sankar was talking once. I just didn't want uh -huh. to interrupt. This. Thank you for waiting for your yeah, chance. So, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I was just asking the question is, how uh, how do you want us to update our portfolio on LinkedIn? Like, do we have to add this as an experience or as a volunteer one? Like, I am a technical expert. I completed my OSIN by instrument, sir. Like, it was in December. So I have a Falcon, I have a Falcon rank. So how do you want me to actually post it in LinkedIn? Like, in an experience uh, portal or as a volunteer one? Like, we have a volunteer section, right? In yeah, LinkedIn? but I think your certification will be like a general one, right? Where you can update it yes. with the details. You have the mm -hmm. option to update your certificate, but that will actually even come as a experience. And also in your voluntary works, you can separately mention it. If you are like wor yes. working as a, uh, if you are an employee of ISEC, if you are contributing beyond your voluntary work, then you can update it as your job experience, like I have done. So, uh, like I first joined as a volunteer, but then I became a part of the organization. So, I updated my LinkedIn job experience and I updated it there. The certification, irrespective of like if it's a voluntary one, but then you have paid for the certificate, you got the certificate in your hand, so definitely you can update it there. And then your voluntary work, you can update it there as well. It's totally up to you. But yeah, please be yes, careful I'm because we have seen that CCIOs, uh, they in the title they have mentioned, I'm cybercrime investigation officer, that alone we request, please uh, don't uh, change the uh, meaning of CCIO. If after doing 50, not to you, okay, I'm not, uh, I don't remember the person's name. Uh, he was a different person. I even texted him in LinkedIn. I told him that, you know, session is going to happen. I'm going to take up this topic and talk at least before that. You change your name from investigation officer to intervention officer. He thanked me, but he never changed it so if people like that are there then only to them we request that after 15 hours we don't know if ccio is investigation officer or intervention officer then that itself proves how much we will be like you know able to help people so please just take care of that and then thank you for asking this question that might have helped uh, many of uh, the candidates here to update it so please update your certification in linkedin please update your experience in linkedin that will also add to the branding and uh, people have asked me how will people know that i am a first responder how will they seek my help that will depend on how you brand yourself Yes, branding is very much necessary. There was a time when I never used to put anything in LinkedIn. Naidu sir told me that, Lakshmi, it's not about your personal branding here, but you think if you put an article, it will be helping people. And believe me, he was right. When I did this, I started getting more cases. When I did this, there was like one, when I wrote an article, there was like comment wherein people accepted that they didn't fall victim to it. So branding is not just personal branding here, but branding will need to, will lead to, you know, saving lives also. So do it accordingly. But then there are people who will you know just uh, go behind individual glory they're like i'm not even related to isec they'll individually go contact the police but remember whenever you are a part of the organization there is a helping hand above you always to take care of you and when you do things informing us the parent organization there will be a support that is unparalleled so always remember that i have always done all the intervention notifying my organization always under the umbrella of my organization i feel protected so uh, I request the same. I can only recommend the same to you all. But if you follow that, it is actually good for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. I had an actually other question. So okay. recently, I completed my OSIN certification where our students are was helping us with gathering information to dark web and all. So I have been practicing that, uh, practicing that 
to that. So, so what exactly happened is through the data breach and all, I found out the personally identified in, identifiable information of a lot of students who were belonging to India. So I was expecting okay. to help them. So how do I do that? Do I need to send a teacher up with each and every one of them and email because I found their resumes, everything that the university holds about them, like the resumes or whether they uh, the passports or the pictures, the signatures, whatever that, it is. Uh, from How a particular university to... or like it's a random mm -hmm. one? Uh, those those mm -hmm. details that I found uh, that is like in bulk from a particular university or like it is from bulk, a like it is bulk. It is bulk, like it is somewhere bulk, near right? 500 yeah. different passports were at a place. I wasn't actually. able to actually collect each of them because they were the students of the other nationalities also. So I just wanted to uh, respect their privacy because they are not the Indian uh, Indian, Indian okay. students. So I don't know if I so got your question, ask, but uh, I think if you're asking how to proceed with it, if it, if they are from a university, then you can notify the university and guide them how to proceed further with such data. I mean, I think the data leak or something happened. That's what you meant to say, right? No, these were the day, and these were the ransom websites, the right? The ransom, they did not pay the ransom, so they, they just leaked it into their, uh, like the hive or the uh, log with these, uh, uh, these dark ransom web websites. Like, did you find it in dark web or somewhere else? I mean, is it like oh, an open source? Yes, sir. it is dark web. It is dark. No, no. Dark. It is open source through dark web. Through dark web, uh, because I, it, as far as you know, this uh, technical level of thing is concerned, it is beyond my expertise. But then, if you have a doubt like this, you please feel free to drop a mail to me, and I'll pass it on to the technical experts in our team. And what uh, ideally, as a first responder, I would recommend is like if you get to know, but then the question will come: How did you find it? I don't know if you found it in a legal way, then it's fine. But otherwise, I mean, you can notify the respective university. You can just, uh, you know, guide them how to file a complaint. And you can inform mm -hmm. the police, like, uh, you know, we will be, which particular state you are from? No one. These are actually the international no, no, universities. Uh, I'm mean, mean, asking about you. Like, I'm are you from Hyderabad. 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 So we can have a tie yeah. with the police there. We can sign an MOU with the police. So all of you listening, please understand if your respective uh, district or your respective state is try connecting with the police and uh, cyber police, we can sign an MOU with them. And when we sign an MOU, you are resource. We can notify the police that such and such things are happening and so that they can also take an action. So uh, that way also we can move ahead. Uh, individually, you going and reporting them, I don't know how, in what way they'll be taking, but uh, from the organization's uh, support, when you uh, approach them, the, the response will be like slightly different and that will be like taking it to further level and some resolution will be there. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, so somebody has asked my mail ID. Mm -hmm. I've already shared it once, I'll share it again. It's lakshmi.me. Um, Adrit Isaac Foundation dot org. So anybody else? You can even put a mail. Okay. Uh, um, so you can like you just ask this doubt, right? So since it's not clear the way I've answered, then please uh, feel free to put a mail so that you will get the answer from the technical expert or somebody who will be able to guide you on this. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Lakshmi dot mini Adrit Isaac. Yeah, correct. So this is my mail ID, people. You can note it down. I'll even post it in Cop Connect group. So if anybody of you, any one of you, not yet uh, signed the agreement for Cop Connect, please feel free to do it. Then capital uh, or little small? Uh, actually, you can use it. I mean, both way, right? It will still come. I don't. Agnostic. Know, Thanks. It's case sensitive. Uh, you can try. You know, I mean, actually, I I just felt that it is case insensitive. I mean, it's not case sensitive. I believe. Let me just check since you asked. No, even I'm doubtful. Then wasn't it Isaac India dot org or is it changed to Isaac Foundation? It just Very recently mad. changed. It was uh, Isaac India dot org, but it changed. You can keep okay, it so small letter, but as far as I know, it is like case insensitive, but still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Parvez, please okay. tell me. Yes, even for Shiva, it's for, I mean, for all the email IDs which are on isaacindia.org will now be huh, at the foundation. Now it is isaacfoundation.org. foundation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Somebody has uh, helped me out yeah, here. Uh, Ma'am, this is Pallav. Pallav, this, right? Yes, Ma'am, yes. my connect ID password is not working. 
uh, whenever I'm lo trying to log in uh, via my app, it is saying invalid username and password. Uh, so all these cases, uh, you have to shoot a mail to support ID uh, because uh, I'm actually from the intervention and I won't be able to guide you on all these things. So there's like Usha ma'am. So she's the one who is handling all these things and support at the rate okay, isaacfoundation.org. You can drop a mail there. So all okay, the issues in okay. and she's very helpful and she's like taking care of it. So definitely a resolution. You'll get it soon. So anything else people, I don't know if I've missed out uh, any questions, anything that is beneficial for all and related to intervention, please feel free to ask. And uh, we have already overshoot the time by 10 minutes. Uh, Shiva ma'am, how many minutes we have now? Actually, I think we'll close the session now. Yeah, so people, yes, yes, ma'am. So since, uh, you know, already, uh, what to say, we have, we have surpassed the time and uh, we, we had a wonderful discussion. And uh, I've already shared you my email ID. Please feel free to drop a mail to me. Any concerns you have? And one more thing, please remember to uh, record all your cases. I know like even Sai Ma'am has done such a brilliant job. Many of you might not have unmuted. Or we didn't give you the opportunity to unmute. Sorry for that. But please uh, record your cases and share with us. Get the testimony from the victim. Inspire fellow first responder. Inspire the victim to fight back. This is what we will be doing. It's not just a mere ID card or, you know, cop clinic certificate or the technical certificate that you're holding. Let us not make it just a piece of paper. Let us actually use it for the benefit of others. Let us use it for our, I mean, you know, personal growth because helping the victim is our primary duty, you know, our prime responsibility. So let us buckle up and do it. And uh, that's a thank you everyone. Um, I know the participant number is dropping. I do respect it uh, at least after seeing the time. But once again, thank you so much for taking your time on a Sunday, especially on a Sunday and attending this meeting. I hope there was at least some takeaway from the session, despite you all, majority of you being technical experts, till you bother to come and listen to us. And I hope you'll follow whatever we told. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Uh, that's it. So you feel free to leave the session. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saiji. You should mail me, okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll connect to you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, also. Uh, Thank you, ma for the wonderful like session. Thank you, ma'am. I'll get connected. Uh, you can even mail me. I'll send Shiba ma'am's mail ID or uh, Shiba ma'am, if you can just drop your mail ID as well. If you want. I put on the input. Okay. Sure. I've done that and uh, thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for that great session. Very nice. Thank you for the support, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks all the participants. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you, Shiva, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, Shaman, thank you. <laughs>